Hi, welcome to Bar Z. My name is Stan. Uh, this week we're going to do a uh, product review um, from the Anchor Chemical Company. Now, this, these were some samples that were sent to me uh, of uh, G771 Anchor Lube. Uh, you're going to see them here on my right. Uh, and this is the product we're going to be using throughout this video. And uh, you can get a free sample of this, by the way. Um, go to anchorlube.com and, uh, and, and request a free sample of this if you'd like to try it in your shop. Uh, but uh, there were some questions that came up and we had we were wondering about a few things so we did a few tests. Dispensing and dispensing options, how we're going to distribute this material around the shop and uh, in toolboxes and things like that. So let's look at uh, some dispensing options. Hey guys, uh, I'm trying to figure out a good way to dispense uh, anchor lube on my machines. Um, if you know how much you're going to use, I'm a fan of magnetic bowls and an acid brush or regular paintbrush because basically the brush stays with the cup no matter where and you can stick it down on a machine you don't have to worry about it falling over so I'm a big fan of these little magnetic bowls now, if you know how much you're going to use uh, for the day you can just give us a squirt of, uh, of anchor lube and uh, take it away um, I am also going to try a syringe which I thought would be kind of cool if you just need a little bit you can you can apply some in a controlled fashion in a very small spot. Um, I'm also a fan of uh, these little flip cap goodies. Uh, you can put a little bit where you want it and you don't lose the cap. Trouble with these, as soon as that comes off, that gets lost. And this stuff does dry out. So a uh, magnetic bowl with a little bit of paste in it, that'll be perfect for some tapping or some drilling. But uh, those are my options uh, so far, if you've got any others. I'm all ears. I was I was actually considering a, a regular oil can, a squirt pump, and thinning this material out, uh, which I may still try. But uh, so far, this is uh, this is my that's my daily driver right there. But I regularly use oil. But uh, now we're going to try it with the uh, uh, with the anchor lube. Okay. And uh, next up, we did uh, a head to head. Uh, on the bandsaw. I know a lot of you guys don't have uh, flood coolant on your bandsaws and you may want to cut some of these tougher materials but we do a head to head um, between rapid tap and anchor lube. So uh, let's let's go over the bandsaw and have a peek over there. Hey guys, uh, I've taken the uh, the coolant off of my bandsaw, valves turned off, I removed the lock line and I know a lot of you guys don't have flood coolant on your bandsaws so what we're going to do is we're going to cut through, this is a piece of 304 stainless and that is not a high dollar blade at all, that's just a carbon steel blade. But uh, I'm going to get uh, set up here and uh, make a cut with just anchor lube on my, on my saw blade. And I, I think this might be useful to some of you guys if, if you're cutting some of these more difficult materials. So let me get my, uh, let me get my saw down in the same zip code here. Pardon my arm. I'll try to keep it out of the way. And I need to come over and uh, get my part set here. This is the actual part I need to cut, so I might as well just uh, do it now. All right. And there I bumped the camera again. Hope you enjoyed that. And our part's clamped. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring the saw up just a tad and run it. Um, and I've got my magnetic bowl here uh, with anchor lube on it and we're gonna I'm just gonna coat the blade until I see the green come back around and then start to cut uh, you're not gonna be able to hear much this is an old Wilton with an open gearbox so uh, if you've got earplugs now would be the time to put them in there you have it and it's warm to the touch, but not where I can't uh, hold my hand on it. So, yeah, it makes it through the, the tougher materials pretty nicely. And if you don't have coolant, uh, I mean, if you were trying to cut stainless without coolant, you'd just kill your bandsaw blade. So, there it is. I put my blade at risk just for you guys. All right. Okay, so after our last cut, I recorded it here. Uh, AL is anchor lube, so our anchor lube, our surface temperature was 95 degrees by the time we got down to the end of the cut. 
on the butt end of the of the main stock uh, down here I've left a place for the rapid tap so uh, we're gonna cut it again there's still some anchor lube goo over here let me get that out of here and uh, blades a little, a little waxy feeling I don't know what that's gonna affect the uh, the relton but uh, we're just gonna dribble uh, uh, rapid tap on the blade in the same fashion and make the cut the same way and see how we cut with that. So let's fire up the noisemaker and uh, do it again. <laughs> okay and that's that. And let's, uh, let's get our old temp gun out here again. Uh, I probably waited about 10 seconds before I uh, shot the last one, so I'll give this one the benefit of the doubt. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Highest number I've seen so far is one oh, one oh four. I'm hoping you guys can see that display. There's a 105, there's a 106, 107. I'm kind of wiggling around on the end there, the laser dot. Okay, so 107. 107. Okay, so our anchor lube, uh, our surface temperature was 95 degrees when we got done with the cut. The rapid tap, we were 107 when we got done with the cut. Same blade speed, same feed rate. Um... No explanation there, and I I know I gave it plenty of oil, so uh, it uh, it the the uh, anchor loop definitely runs cooler. Next up is a uh, um, I, I had to profile a little part and some 304 stainless on the lathe, and I, I didn't put it up against Relton. There was only one part to make, um, but this is 304 stainless steel. I was using a carbide cutter, um, and, but I went ahead and used the uh, anchor loop on it. And I did a temp test at the end. So let, let's have a peek at that and see what our results were uh, after we got done uh, profiling that. Way. And back um, and as you can see it runs pretty cool um, typically those are the kind of temperature numbers you'd see with flood coolant so it, it, it is a cooler running product and next up uh, this is a conglomeration uh, this is milling drilling tapping parting of various materials from a36 1018 a little bit of 4130 um, this is just some stuff I shot around the shop during the week so let's uh, take a look at some of these these cuts
Okay, well here's a test in, uh, this is a piece of uh, 1 inch uh, 4130. I need to get a quarter 20 hole all the way through it. It's 1 inch thick. Uh, and we're going to use our old friend G771. Looks good. Tap spinning nice and straight. This stuff clings pretty nice. So let's uh, give a little poop on there. We're gonna land it right down the hole. We're gonna have some of that ahead of the head of the tap, and uh, well, let's just go for bear. See how we do. All right, tap's got a hold of it. It's run all the way through, and it is through the hole. And there she's out. And as far as temperature goes, warm to the touch. That's about it. But the clinginess of it really stuck to the tap. And we're back. Uh, and now for the grand finale, we're going to uh, put rapid tap uh, up against anchor lube head to head. Uh, we're going to be using high speed steel. We're going to be cutting 304 stainless on the lathe. Uh, equal RPM, equal depths of cut, equal, equal, equal. So, uh, and this is kind of dangerous because as soon as you see your chips start changing color in stainless, uh, you, you will ruin a high speed steel tool. Um, so you're going to get these long stringy chips. So there's a word of caution that make sure you keep your hands out of there. That will, it's not about cutting your finger. It's about cutting your finger off. So, uh, be careful. All right, let's go have a look at that. Okay. So here we are. We need to, uh, we've got this bar. We need to get it down to three quarter. So we're still 179 thousandths over. And, uh, I've already made one cut and we're at... Uh, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's uh, 40 degrees Celsius. And uh, I've just been taking 20 thousandths. Got to cut to get to where I am now. And no signs of work hardening. Just touching there, I'm going to go 10, 20, all over, we'll do 30,000 step to cut at this RPM. Uh, I'm running at 250 right now. Uh, 30,000 step to cut, and uh, uh, 8,000 per rep. And what a bird's nest we got going here. Okay, uh, eight thousandths per rev, thirty thousandths depth to cut, two hundred and fifty RPM. Um, still one hundred four, one hundred four Fahrenheit, uh, thirty-nine point nine Celsius. Still got a pretty nice finish. The tool still looks good when I'm burning up, it, up the tool. And, uh, damn Celsius. Um, 106, 
108 degrees Fahrenheit. That's uh, 42 Celsius. Well, our part's coming up on temp a little bit. Uh, it's not getting out of control. Uh, our chips still got a good color. Uh, as soon as you see stainless steel chips turn color, it's all over. Uh, you've ruined your tool and you've work hardened. You're done. Uh, right there. 104 Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius. So it actually cooled down, uh, making that lighter cut. Uh, they did from uh, so we're not we're not it's not getting away from us is what I'm saying. Okay, we got nine thousands to pull out of it. Check our final temp in Fahrenheit, and it's still coming down. Uh, we're at one hundred. Degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 38 degrees Celsius. So, um, yeah, it's quite cool to the touch. It's ready to come out. And now I'm going to zoom in on that finish. And I'm going to uh, pull the tool and let you look at the tool. And then we're going to do this all over again with Rapid Tap. Won't that be great? All right, let's take a look at this. So here's your finished part. Uh, we were running heavy cuts in back gear about two, 250 RPM um, with 30,000 depth, depth of cut, 8,000 per rev. Um, so that's the finish. And the part actually started cooling down after uh, we started taking the lighter cuts when we came up on our size. Now, um, let's take a look at the tool. So now you, you can see the finish. I hope I'm holding it in the light so you can see the finish I got out of that. So very nice and not oily. You know, all the wax is wiped off. It's good. Let's, uh, let me wipe down the tool. And this tool made it through the entire cut. Uh, no resharpening or anything like that. There's your leading edge. And my little chip breaker there did absolutely nothing. I was hoping that it would somehow manage to break the chip, but that stainless is too tough. It just will not. It's too hard. It'll, it'll curl up all day long, but it just won't snap. So, anyways, that's the cutting tool. Looks pretty good. Still very keen on the end. Uh, we're going to do all this over again with the Relton, uh, the Rapid Tap, and uh, I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to go ahead and diamond hone all this, and we're going to go through this whole thing again uh, with Relton and make another one of these. All right. Okay, same drill as before. Uh, Chucked up, got to get it, it's one inch, got to get it down to three quarter, same tool, uh, just ran a, ran a diamond hone over it and keened it up a little bit, switched to the rapid tap, I uh, got it in back gear, um, 250 RPM, 8 thousandths per rev, uh, everything's the same here, so uh, let's uh, oil it and let her rip. Temperature. Um, we're at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or actually 102 degrees Fahrenheit, 38.9 Celsius. Uh, 129. That is uh, 52 degrees Celsius. And I don't think we're anywhere near our 
size we need. That was only uh, 60 thousandths or 100, 60 thousandths uh, on one side. Yeah, we're still 120 out. Um, on the on the anchor lube, I went ahead and pushed it and went all the way up to 35. So I think I'm gonna do that on this bass. So it's a 10, 20, 30, and an extra five thousand for good measure. All right, let's check temperature. Centigrade. What we what we find out? We found out that we punished the tool an awful lot. Uh, did de depths of cut? Yeah, pretty much what I usually do between twenty five and thirty five thousandths depth of cut. That's about my RPM range. Uh, usually I use flood coolant. I got the spout out of your way for the camera right now. But uh, usually I flood the part so my part never gets hot and I never have to worry about a built up edge. And the flood coolant, I'm real happy with it. Uh, but this works good. The Relton Rapid Tap works okay. Uh, you know, the Anchor Lube works equally well. I'd say it's a match. I don't, I just don't see any difference between the two. Uh, let's get this out of the out of the three jaw and let you have a look at it. Our final temperature is quite a bit higher on this one. That uh, was uncomfortable in my hands right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this part down. I'm going to show you those two parts. The one on the bottom here is the Relton. And the one on the top here is the Anchor Lube. I can tell that because this one's hot and this one's cool. Uh, so there's your, there's your difference. Okay. And gosh, I, I, I got to say there's not much difference. And... Uh, now let's take a look at the tool and clean that up. And the tool again made it all the way through the, the cut with no resharpens or anything. I, we started off and ran all the way through to it. And there again is my chip breaker that doesn't work. And uh, the tool grind I was using, the lead in angle, there's, there's the top down view of it. There's an in view. side view okay so uh, turning I don't see any difference between the rapid tap and the anchor lube it uh, maybe all this will just boil down to cost of material uh, this is an oily mess but uh, your alternatives are wow this is a waxy mess so uh, let's try some more and we're back from that. That was uh, pretty interesting uh, temperature results. Uh, while I was collecting them, I didn't see a, a whole lot of difference, but the numbers speak for themselves. And I've got them collected here. Um, anchor lube, uh, 104, 108, 104, and 100, giving us an average of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Relton Rapid Tap, 102, 129, 111, and 118, giving us an average temperature of 115. So, uh, for a water-based product, it outperforms the petroleum-based product in this aspect. Now, you're probably saying, why should I switch to this uh, when it's so close to performance? Um, the best price I could find on Rapid Tap, the Relton Rapid Tap, was $40 a gallon on Amazon that wasn't shipped. Um, Anchor Lube, 
Suggested retail price on that is thirty-four dollars and seventy cents. Uh, but what the what the people over at Anchor Lube have done for the YouTube community is they are offering it to us for twenty-five dollars and eighty cents. Um, you need to mention uh, my YouTube channel when you call in to get that pricing. So uh, any of the keywords will work. Stan at Bar Z or Shaden HKW or the YouTube metalworking community and Stan at Bar Z, whatever. Any, any of those combinations will work over at Anchor Lube. Um, call the 800 number and place your order. Uh, when you do call that number, you do get an actual person, which is appreciated in my book. I really hate talking to machines. All right. Um, now you're probably wondering to yourself, you know what, what, what does Stan get out of this? Well, you know what? I have a potential sponsor for my channel to support me making videos for you guys, uh, which hasn't come about yet, but it might happen. So I may have a channel sponsor and I get a free cutting fluid. Uh, what do you guys get out of it? Well, um, after negotiating with the Anchor Lube people and uh, they offered me that discounted rate for you. So that's what you get out of it, is you get a discounted rate on cutting fluid that in my opinion works very well and is very equal to the rapid tap. Um, what does Anchor Lube get out of it? Well, even though they're selling at a discounted rate and probably not making as much money as they like to make, they are making some sales. So everyone is winning equally. And I wouldn't be even here talking to you about this if it didn't perform. Um, I'm pretty happy. I've been using it for about a week or a week and a half and pretty much any job that would require cutting oil, I just cut it off and use that. I've used it in the field and I've used it here at the shop and I am pleased with it. Um, but try it for yourself. You don't have to believe me. Call the 800 number, uh, go online, request your free sample and uh, give it a shot. I think you guys are gonna like it. All right, uh, I appreciate you watching. I know this was a long video and it took you a while to get through it and I know your time is valuable to you, but uh, I appreciate your time and I want you guys to have a good week. Thanks for watching, bye.